shares hitting an all-time high today, with the stock close to becoming the second public U.S. company to hit a $1 trillion market cap. Should investors sell the stock after it crosses that mark? Or add more. Kim Coggy from Forest, uh, Kim Coggy Forest, excuse me, from Fort Pitt Capital Group joins us. Ashim Mera from Barron Funds, Amazon largest holding in his fund. Do you buy more when it hits that threshold or not? You know, we're already shareholders of Amazon. We've been shareholders for many years. When we look at three to five years, we're long-term shareholders. We think this company has the potential to double again in that type of time frame. So we're not really advocating to buy more or not here. We're just saying as long-term shareholders, we think there's still a lot more upside. And assume one of the kickers that you think can, can drive it to two trillion is that they're going to do more advertising, something that they're not doing much of yet that could be a big revenue driver. Yeah, and the advertising for those of us who've been paying attention over the last few quarters has really become a big driver. It's an $8 billion run rate revenue business for these guys with 70 to 80% incremental margins. And it's still growing 90%. So if you think about what that could be in three or more in five years, that could be $30, $50 billion revenue business with very high margins. Then you look at the cloud business, that's another business, the $25 billion run rate business with 30% segment margins. So if you look at the overall profitability of Amazon, when you compare it versus five years ago, when you just looked at the retail business, it's completely different. And so the profitability is really inflecting at Amazon um, over this year and next year. Mike, you could just look at Amazon. I mean, Apple hitting a trillion dollars, yeah. being on the front pages of all the news. It hasn't proven to be any sort of sell signal no, yet. No, I don't, I don't think it's, uh, it's ringing any kind of a bell necessarily. Very different kind of paths there, though. I mean, for Apple, it really represents almost the here and now profitability of the company. It's right there on paper in terms of how much cash the company has, buying back stock every single day. And, uh, and, of course, the enormous earnings that they put up. With Amazon, it is about the size of the markets that they're attacking. And actually, uh, Ashman, just quickly, I mean, if I'm listening to you about Amazon's influence on advertising, sure. I mean, that's a big net loss to everybody else, right? I mean, is, is Google in trouble in that instance, or is it the pie big enough? We don't, we don't think so. I think there's one, that's a good question, one area where retail where they definitely will compete more. But as we look at where Amazon's getting its dollars from, it's really co-op marketing. So it's... You think about the old dollars that were spent in the front of the aisle in a grocery store, the P&Gs to get those inserts. That's really where the dollars are coming from. And that could be a $100, $200 billion market separate from what Google and what Facebook are already getting. So we think both can succeed. Kim, clearly there's lots of positives. What are the risks for Amazon? Well, I think the biggest risk is, you know, they are the target, right, for everybody that is going online and trying to move some of the business online. They are measuring themselves against... Amazon. So they are going to try to at least uh, slow down, if not stop, you know, the erosion of uh, dollars to um, Amazon. So how do you do that? Well, you become a better merchandiser, essentially. Right now, Target, or I'm sorry, um, Amazon really is a convenience store. They're not someplace that I like to dilly-dally and shop, and I don't think I'm alone there. I go there, I buy stuff, I don't add stuff to my cart. I'm in and I'm out. And I think to really become a compelling long-term uh, retailer, you have to learn how to merchandise, and that's a big um, question mark. But I think the even bigger question mark is they're really um, valuable property called Amazon Web Services. Again, uh, companies are out there that have viable products that can uh, really go after that business, like Microsoft. And I think Microsoft's large installed base that uses their tools and all of their services, it's kind of a no-brainer to move your cloud if you're already using Microsoft products onto the Microsoft cloud. And I think that um, that's a real com competition for the company. And they're going to have to step it up and spend a whole lot more on tools and ancillary products that you need whenever you're moving your business to the cloud in a meaningful way. What about the fact that it is one of the most popular political punching bags right now from both Republicans <laughs> and Democrats? I and mean, this is what happens when you get big and powerful, right? Is there any real risk for investors right now, whether it's antitrust regulation or just the headline noise? It doesn't look like it's shaking confidence just yet. I think that's an Kim. excellent point. Oh, am, uh, me or yeah, the yeah, other Yeah, go for it. Okay. Yeah, Kim, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's an excellent point, and I think it's, you know, uh, kind of telling that Jeff Bezos thinks that it's a, a, an issue, too, having moved closer and closer to D.C. in his physical presence, you know, the new big Jeff house and uh, ownership of The Washington Post. So he, clearly he sees that as a huge issue. 
Does the, does the other guy worry about that? Uh, the other guy worries about a lot of things. Um, <laughs> I think I worry a little bit more about China these days uh, as a global macro risk for all stocks. Um, and to the degree that, you know, we do still import a lot of drugs and there's some e-packet stuff that Amazon benefits from. But outside of that, um, we think, you know, if you're willing to look out three to five years, we still think Amazon's a pretty interesting stock to own.